Okay, everybody, Stephen Key, I'm back, and I've got a special guest today that's going to help you, oh, relax. It's going to help you if you're shy, if you're pitching, if you're going to do a presentation, all the things that really get us nervous when we have to do some public speaking. And I know I get nervous. So, Justin, thank you for coming on InventRight TV. My pleasure. Happy all right. Everybody's afraid of public speaking. I would say not everybody, but most everybody. Is that true? I mean, there, yeah, it, there's an evolutionary reason for it. You know, psychologically in the ancestral environment, if everybody in the tribe was looking at you all at once, that probably wasn't a good thing in most cases. Okay. So, yeah, it, there is that tendency among many people, but it's also a skill that you can learn and okay. learn to love and you can really excel at with the right approach. Okay. Yeah, I believe that completely because um, yeah. people wouldn't think that I was quiet or shy, but I had a very large um, learning disability in school and I didn't really want to, I pronounced words incorrectly, I still do, but I was really shy. And the last thing I wanted to do was to be called on in the classroom or give a presentation or talk with even a small group I avoided that like the plague. And everybody yeah. thought, wow, Steve is the quiet, silent type. Um, but I was just, I was fearful. Yeah, um, and so many people are like that, you know. Okay. And and it starts in childhood or in school usually, and then it just compounds oh. into adulthood, you know. Okay. And, and then you're a professional or you're uh, mid-career, and then you realize, oh, I have to start presenting <laughs> to the C-suite. I have to start pitching multi-million dollar deals. And that's when people discover people like me. Okay. So before we start, um, we're going to talk about, everybody's listening, we're going to talk about how, how you can relax yourself if you're going to give a presentation. But also, even today, even during what's happening today, you're going to probably be on Zoom or on Skype, and maybe you're doing presentations. And maybe you're pitching your product idea because it does work. But... At the end of the day, you have to feel comfortable. You have to feel, feel confident. You have to feel at ease a little bit. And that does take a little bit of practice. And we're going to learn these tips with Justin now. Justin, first of all, before yeah. we dive in too far, what do you do? I'm a public speaking and communication coach. My company is Cool Communicator. And I've been coaching professionals, CEOs, college students, startup founders, all different types of people okay. for the last four years on professional communication skills, assertiveness, building confidence in the workplace, as well as formal presentations and public speaking. All right, wonderful. Yeah. Um, you were recommended to me by a good friend, Mark. Mark, hi, and if you're watching this, hi. Thank you for introducing me to Justin because he said to me, you know, he's been on TV, he's had a you know, TV show, he does a lot of speaking, but when he got to a large crowd, he needed help. That's why he contacted you, is that correct? Absolutely, and the great thing about Mark is that he already had a lot of confidence in other areas. All right. You know, I mean, many of your viewers know, this is a guy that has pitched multi-million dollar deals, you know, very successful in business. So when you have that confidence in one area of your okay. life or your professional life, you can oftentimes transplant that, the same muscle memory and the right. same attitudes and the same techniques over into a legitimate presentation situation. Okay. So everybody needs help. That's, that's the reason why I wanted to mention that. I needed help. I'll talk about how I got over it a little bit. Everybody needs some help. So that's why we're going to do this video. Okay. So let's talk about getting the the... the anxiety out a little bit yeah. before you're ready because you've got some great tips so let's go yeah. through some of the tips what's what's the first tip first tip is and this is actually partially inspired by mark okay because when we were working together he mentioned that one of his techniques that he developed over the years before going into that boardroom where he was about to pitch a multi-million dollar deal a lot of money on the line high stakes he would call up a friend oh. and just chat and just socialize and joke around for five or 10 minutes right before going into the meeting. Hmm. So he would put himself in a really positive and confident state and then that energy would carry into the meeting itself. So I recommend that people socialize. You've done this a lot yourself when you had speaking opportunities. Chat with the audience, humanize them. Get to know them on a personal level as much as you can. You can't always do it, 
but you can also do it sometimes remote as well. It's not perfect, but that's a big thing because you want to feel like these are your friends rather than, you know, me versus the mob kind of thing. I really like that. Um, I've noticed that if I do a speaking event, I try to get there a little early. Some speakers like to come out there with the drum roll, the music, and they're out there on stage. I'm not one of those guys. I get there early, shake hands, talk to people, because it, it, it relaxes me a little bit. And then when I get up and start to talk, I look at them and they're like my friends. They want me to do good. So exactly. I, I like I like getting the words out even beforehand. That, that first, when you get up there, those first couple of words, sometimes you can stumble. But if you're talking beforehand, like Mark said, it's easier. Okay. Exactly. You're, you're fluid, you know, you're in a good vibe, good rhythm. And especially if you're an inventor, or you're a very analytical person and you're in front of a computer screen all day for hours and hours on end, or you're doing sketches or whatever you're doing, you know, you have to shift into that social mode okay. prior to actually giving the presentation. That's why that's effective. Yeah. All right. Number two. Okay. Number two, breathing. Breathing and breath control is so critical. You know, fight or flight response. That's what happens. It's an automatic thing in the body. Right. Okay. Whether you're jumping out of an airplane, whether you're about to propose marriage to somebody, whether you are about to give a speech in front of a thousand people, right. it's a fight or flight thing. You know, it's an automatic phenomenon in the body. So part of that is shallow breathing. So your breathing becomes more shallow as a physiological response. That's a problem for two major reasons. One, because your voice becomes weaker. Okay. And secondly, because your brain has less oxygen. So you're literally going to be less effective. So I recommend that breathing is something that people do deep and slow breathing prior to getting on stage. Oh, it feels good Think too. About, <laughs> it, it feels good. It makes you feel relaxed. Right. And I recommend uh, four seconds in, four seconds out. Okay. Steady, slow, and controlled. Do that a couple of times. You're going to feel a lot better. It just kind of calms you. I've done that before. It just kind of just relaxes you because your muscles are tight, aren't they? Yeah. How, exactly. how, do, you, how do you, you know, I, I, find, my, me, I find myself tightening up how do you how do you get that out do you do any exercise before how do you how do you yeah. relax your muscles exercise if you can exercise if you can hit the gym the morning of your presentation right. that would be the third major thing uh or if you can do some stretching or if you can do walking around the block whatever physical movement okay. right to get the blood flowing your muscles will literally become more relaxed and you'll feel a lot better okay great tip what's a good yeah. what's another tip of what about practicing before you go on because you know, this is really interesting. Um, I like to know who my audience is, first of all, so I, I can really, I don't want to overwhelm them. I want to make sure I can leave them with a tip or two, right? Yeah. But I'm also aware of who they are, what they really need. But practice really helps. But I don't practice right before either. I don't know if you, what, what are your thoughts about that? Because you have to let it sit in and be relaxed. What, what, what do yeah. you think about practicing? So I, I started doing this specific line of coaching about four years ago. And one of the most interesting things that I discovered was that a lot of people that think they're just bad presenters don't do any practice. All right. They don't do any rehearsal at all. And then they're surprised <laughs> when they underperform, when the pressure's on and the all CEO right. is staring at them, right? So practice, practice, practice. It's so critical because your performance is going to be much better okay. and you're going to feel a lot more confident. So I recommend you try to do as much as you can, especially if this is a skill that is really tough for you, do even more practice. If it's an audience that is especially intimidating to you for whatever reason, okay. do even more practice. You want to feel like you're the total master of your content going into that situation. I'll, I'll tell you a quick story about Steve Jobs and how he practiced, right? So Steve Jobs, obviously one of the best uh, business presenters ever. And so what he did, his approach, he would start practicing and rehearsing three weeks out whenever he had a major event coming up, All right. three weeks at least. And he would, even if only 10% of the presentation was ready, he would start getting feedback from his executives right away. Okay. And he would continue to practice bit by bit over the weeks. One week before showtime, he would rent out the venue where he was going to be doing the event. Okay. Because remember, these were huge events, right? Yes. And he would do two back-to-back -back dress rehearsals, Saturday and Sunday, the week okay. before the okay. actual event. Okay. Okay. That's the level of rehearsal that we're talking about to really get to the high level and perform at you, the peak. You know, it's amazing. When you watch him do those presentations, he looks so at ease. 
Yeah. And the way he carries his body, the way he just walks that stage, it seems like he owns it. That's his living room. So, exactly. yeah, so that's how he's done that because I've watched those um, and read a book about the, the presentation styles of Steve Jobs. And you realize it was simple, but he just narrowed it down to what was really important, but it was such at ease. Absolutely. And that was a function of the rehearsal. You know, okay. every little aside, a little joke, something that seemed spontaneous and off the cuff, that was practice. All right. Right. That's why he was able to execute. It looks so good. Okay. Yeah. What about, because I know a lot of us um, are camera shy, right? So, and I know maybe even being on Skype, right? They don't know how they look. Maybe they're fidgeting. Maybe they're shifty eyes or whatever. Yeah. Maybe they don't even know what the lighting is going to be like. Like I checked my lighting before we went on. Yeah. How do you get, how do you practice with that? What's a, what's a good advice? You need to get exposure. You know, so much of the fear is caused by uncertainty, okay. right? So if you're not familiar, if you've only had two opportunities your whole life to be on camera, the third opportunity is going to be pretty intimidating. But if you've done it a thousand times, the 1,000 and first time is going to be a lot easier. So practice on your phone. Take one of these little devices, which everybody has, right? And just practice, practice, practice. Practice your pitch. Practice your intro. Practice your closing. Practice the transitions. Okay. Practice and watch yourself on video. And then if you see that you have weird facial tics or you're repeating yourself too much, you're going to see it on video. <gasps> That's so painful. Wait, that's it's painful cringy. to watch. It's cringy. It's, right. it's always right. cringy the first few times, but you know what? You'll right. get the hang of it. And I always tell people this. You are the only person on planet Earth who has not seen you. All right. Right? Everyone right. else has seen you speak. Okay. In conversations, presentations. Right. You're the only one who hasn't seen yourself. That's so, you know, that helps people. So you need life. to watch that. What about yeah. what what to wear? Have you do you prepare that way too? Of maybe your background. I've noticed that I've, I've done a couple TV spots, and I always look beforehand what the colors of the backgrounds are to kind of maybe kind of kind of I wouldn't say match, but kind of work together with the color scheme. Is that important? You know, I think so. You're talking at a high level there, like in a professional TV studio. Okay. What they should be doing is the producers and the wardrobe people should be handling a lot of those things for you if you're the guest. If you're, right? if you're that important. I'm not that right. important. So there right. wasn't that there. Maybe makeup if I was lucky, but yeah. there wasn't wardrobe. But I know what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I think in terms of you should have great decor or a plain background. I have a plain background, obviously. You have some inventions, you have toys and stuff. You know, that's representative of your background. But you should also dress in a way that makes you feel great. It makes you feel confident. Your hair, your you know, facial hair, nails, makeup, clothing, all that stuff. Don't just throw something on. You know, create a look that is going to make you feel really good going into that situation. It's going to make a difference in the moment when the pressure is on. Got it. So all these things kind of add up. Yeah, exactly. They all add up to just getting out there with the confidence and and realizing that yes you're going to be a little nervous that's okay but how to calm your nerves so those yeah. are really great tips how that's we're going to put cool. information you guys this is really important i know it takes some time it takes some practice you all can do it i don't care how shy you are you can do this but it takes a little bit of practice and it takes tips and justin thank you very much for supplying those tips we're going to put all his contact information down below. If you need more advice, he's here for you. So, Justin, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.